This is our last video on pricing strategies that a firm with market power may consider using. The purpose of all the pricing strategies that we have considered is to increase profits. A tie-in sale is a type of nonlinear pricing in which consumers can buy one product only if they agree to buy another product as well. As an example, a Ford Service Center will only install genuine Ford parts. If you take your car to a Ford Service Center, you are choosing to get Ford parts. A requirement tie-in sale is a tie-in sale in which customers who buy one product from a firm are required to make all their purchases of another product from that firm. For example, if you buy a printer of a certain brand, you may get locked into buying ink cartridges from the same company. I find it amazing how much printer you can get with your money on one hand and then how much you spend on ink on the other. Another example is when you buy a new car, you often must use an authorized service center for repairs and maintenance or the warranty is void. In this video, we are going to focus on bundling. Bundling is a type of tie-in sale in which two or more goods are sold together as a bundle. An example of this is Microsoft Office, where you get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, etc. together as a bundle. Also, a computer retailer may sell you a computer, printer, and software together. Sometimes bundling strategies are used where consumers have a choice to buy the product as a bundle or separately. To see how bundling can increase your profits over what could be earned by pricing them separately, consider the following example for two consumers, Alex and Barbara. Alex and Barbara are both shopping for a word processing software and spreadsheet software. Let's first look at how much the firm can make by pricing the software separately. The table shows the consumer's reservation prices. Alex is willing to pay $100 for the word processing software and Barbara $70. What is the profit maximizing price for the word processor sold separately? If the firm charges $100, only Alex will buy. If the firm charges $70, then both Alex and Barbara will buy the word processing software and the firm will earn $140. So $70 is the profit maximizing price for the word processing software. What is the profit maximizing price for the spreadsheet sold separately? For the spreadsheet, if the firm charges $80, then only Barbara will buy and the firm will make $80 on the spreadsheet. If the firm charges $60, then both Alex and Barbara will buy for a total of $120. So the firm will do better with the lower price of $60. It is important to note that the lower price is not always better. If Alex's reservation price was only $10 for the spreadsheet, then charging $10 so that it would sell two units of the spreadsheet would only enable the firm to earn $20, which is less than it could make selling the spreadsheet to only Barbara for $80. Since the firm is selling two units of the word processing software for $70 each and two units of the spreadsheet software for $60 each, the firm's maximum profit from selling the product's price separately is $260. Now let's explore how much the firm can earn if it sells the products as bundles. First, we need to calculate each consumer's reservation price for the bundle. Alex is willing to pay $100 for the word processor and $60 for the spreadsheet, so Alex would be willing to pay the sum $160 for the bundle. Adding up the prices that Barbara is willing to pay for each of the products yields a bundle price of $150 for Barbara. What is the profit maximizing price for a bundle containing both the word processor and the spreadsheet? So the firm has a choice to sell the bundle for $150 or $160. If it chooses to sell the bundle for $160, then only Alex will buy and the firm will earn $160. If the firm chooses to sell the bundle for $150, then the firm will be able to sell two bundles, earning a total of $300. So $150 as the bundle price is the profit maximizing price. Recall that the maximum possible profit the firm could earn selling the products separately was $260. Now bundling the products, the firm can earn $300. So bundling in this situation will enable the firm to earn higher profits than it could earn pricing the products separately. The reason that bundling increases profits in this case is because the demands for the two consumers are negatively correlated. That is, Alex has higher willingness to pay for the word processor than Barbara, and Barbara has a higher willingness to pay for the spreadsheet than Alex. So when making pricing decisions for a business, if consumers' willingness to pay for products is negatively correlated, then selling products as a bundle may increase profits.